talk about your shifts of functions. When you're talking about your parent functions and how they shift, I explained using words. Your example on one of the pages before this. Here the, the equation, the g of x equals negative 2 the, times the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 3. I've graphed that and my graph is in red. You can see it here. Now you will have a question that says how does this g of x transform or shift from the parent function and identify the parent function? Well, knowing the chart that I give you and the video that you just watched about how to identify the parent function, I can look and see that this is a parabola shaped. So a parabola shaped, I know that is a quadratic, so a quadratic is f of x squared. So the parent function f of x is x squared because the shape is a parabola. Remember it can open up or open down. Now looking at how the red graph moves from the blue graph, so looking at my vertexes, that's a good way to start. How does the vertex 0, 0 go over to negative 1, 3? So let's talk about our, uh, excuse me, our change inside parentheses. Now, it sounds funny and you think you might be wrong, but when I go plus 1 inside the quantity, inside the parentheses, the graph is actually moving to the left plus 1 in that x plus 1 squared moves it to the left. So if I were to identify it, I would say the g of x moves to the left one unit. And how many does it go up from 0, 0? My y value is 3. So it goes up 3 values. So that's my plus 3 over here. So I've got my transformation left, my shift left, and my change up three. And then I'm going to talk about what the negative does. The negative in front of the two, if you look at the directions of your chart, tells you that it causes the parabola to flip or reflect over the x-axis. So my original blue is opening up my red is opening down, so it flipped or turned upside down, and the word we use is reflect, in this case, over the x-axis. So I've got one more to talk about, which is this 2 value right there. What that 2 does, just the 2, the 2 causes, that's your a, your a value is greater than 1, it causes your graph, if you can look, it is a little bit skinnier, a little bit slimmer, and I want to show you this. Let me take this negative off here and show you. So that negative, just by adding that negative, makes the graph flip. So doing that a couple times, you can see that it flips. Pretty cool, right? So how does this g of x move? It reflects over the x-axis. It becomes stretched or skinnier. It moves to the left one and it moves up three places. So that is the first example. Example two, you have the equation g of x is the absolute value of negative five minus two. You have to identify the parent function and tell me how it moves. Well, looking at the shapes of the graph or noticing that I have a absolute value symbol here, that tells me that my parent function graph or my parent graph is the absolute value of x. Notice the shape is still a V. So now I have a, a purple graph, which is my parent function, the absolute value of X, and then the G of X. I'm gonna click on the vertexes for both again. The G of X, it's gonna to move to the right. How many places does it move to the right? It moves five to the right. Now again, you have to think, okay, you don't wanna say plus five when you're talking about being inside the absolute value. If you're inside the absolute value, it is actually minus five to make it go to the right. And you can experiment and see how that works. You can also use your table of values. So this green graph changes from the parent function. It goes to the right five units. 
And how do I show it's a negative 2? What's my change in y here? 0 to negative 2. It goes down 2 units. So that's all that did from the parent function. No flips, no stretches or compresses. It just went to the right 5 units and down 2 units. And that's how you're using graphs to identify your parent function shifts or transformations.